the quality of service which is seen now from different viewpoints from four market model has to be governed as well this is known as the regulatory aspect we've already covered the business regulatory aspects but there is another qs regulatory dimension as well so we are going to look at how ngn regulations are part of the qs uh, requirements then we are going to look at certain perspectives or aspects and then we'll see if we have certain flexibility in regulatory issues from the uh, uh, authority viewpoint so uh, the first and most important thing is that uh, why ngn qs regulations are important first of all uh, the qs is provided for these services on internet so basically this becomes internet provisioning regulations so ngn services are provided on the internet architecture using the transport and service stratum uh, so starting from the um, devices such as routers and switches to the servers the databases everything has to be regulated now this regulation is governed by managed implemented by certain regulatory agencies which belong to every country and nation in pakistan these uh, uh, this regulatory uh, agency is known as the pta pakistan telecommunications authority uh, the qs regulations actually are from different perspectives for instance there is a qs regulation requirement between the operators that is two operators providing services to different uh, customers their own customer base may be required to interact with each other in that case the qs regulations have to be enforced at the interconnections that is the point where these two networks interact with each other it is known as the internet exchange point or the peering point another qs regulation requirement emerges once an operator and an end user interact with each other now this overall situation is also governed by the fact that the qs requirements are different for the circuit switched and packet switched networks uh, that is once the traffic is transitioned from the traditional pst and plmn or broadcast network to all ip network and vice versa so these aspects for qs regulations are important for the regulatory authorities in a country uh, the technical aspects for qs regulations also have to be kept in mind for instance is the regulation being considered for a packet switched or a circuit switched network is this a single service network or a multi service network are multiple operators involved in this uh, uh, transaction or in this business activity or it's a single operator network uh, the concepts of monopoly and monopsony uh, have already been discussed if you recall then the global architecture of the internet makes the ngn qs regulations a tricky thing because it has a global uh, character involved in it and that is why there are certain uh, issues which emerge as conflict between uh, nations between regulatory bodies and the international associations like the itut itf etc there is something known as the open internet order uh, that is quite a concern and it's quite contentious because the countries are not willing to adopt the open internet order which was uh, ordered by the federal commissions on communications fcc some countries actually agreed to it some differed with it then another important dimension to the regulation is the contract or the service level agreement between the dominant players for instance uh, vendors service providers network providers etc now uh, these uh, pro, uh, dominant players actually determine the shape of the qs regulations in a certain country uh, then uh, if the situation is so wide and so uh, varied then what are the options that can be adopted uh, this is not the final um, view but it provides a good perspective on how the regulations can be adopted 
the first thing and the most important thing is that these regulations cannot be overly strict because the overall architecture of internet is open so anything that is so rigid cannot work with the openness of the internet the technology is changing all the time the internet architecture is evolving and it's highly dynamic so for given all these things uh, the regulatory intervention by the government primarily should be quite limited um, in fact some self regulation model can be promoted uh, do, if you remember we have we have already discussed the de facto and de jure models um, for instance if some kind of fair competition can be allowed to take place between different service providers vendors etc and let them decide their limitations their bounds their responsibilities and liabilities so this self regulation model is in fact the best but it needs a big brothers eye of the government 